What you gonna do when highlight catch an attitude? Drop to the knees and show gratitude. Kiss my ring, chick. This song right here is for all the fellas out there. Taking care of business and making that money. To provide for their ladies, provide for their family. And to all the ladies out there. The fellas gonna need a little bit more than a big piece of chicken. If you got a good man and you want for nothing, and you wanna keep that man, you need to learn how to check that attitude. You need to show some appreciation. You need to show some respect. Girl, you need to bow down. All my fellas, tell your lady. Bow to me, bow to me, kneel for me, kneel for me. Kiss the ring, kiss the ring. Bow to me, bow to me, kneel for me, kneel for me. Pay how much to the king in your life. Wisdom and security, I give that. Devotion and honesty, I show that. Passion and love, you feel that. Bow down, girl, you need to show some respect. Obedience and loyalty, I need that. Friendship and trust, I've earned that. Gratitude, appreciation, I deserve that. Bow down, pay how much to the king in your life. Baby girl, what's the deal? What's the deal? Got no time for freaking girl, you're acting mad. You're acting mad. Never want for nothing, cause I'm paying the bills. I'm paying the bills. Sleeping all day, the house is filthy. No, no meal. Come on, girl, give me some feedback. Give me feedback. Let me know what's good, what's up. Where's your head at? What's Giving me attitude, not today, girl. Dead that. Strip off some clothes, I'm trying to beat that. Bed that. You're really saying not tonight? Not tonight. My blood is boiling hot, girl, you're getting me tight. Aw, oh, man. To the, right, to, the right, to the right, to the right, don't let that door hit your ass when you leave, you talking like you hot, you not, shorty, I know dime pieces, trust me, you not, you not, I can get a next chick, next one. like Gucci said in the next 15 minutes, you ain't special, don't be foolish, running around town like you rich, no, I'm rich, without me, you wouldn't even have that, I'm Scrooge McDuck swimming in money, hold my top hat, Park Avenue lifestyle, you love it, you're acting out of order and now you're gonna lose it, you claim that you're in love with me and love with me. You wanna be my wifey, be my wifey. That's looking pretty bleak, unlikely. You should have paid how much, girl? You fucked up. Love to the FBI. Hey, cause I'm addicted to the good life. Yes. Yeah. How you doing, everybody? The way Get them up. I fall Big Shirley. No need to say. Where we are heading now. Shout out to all the PhDs up in this motherfucker. I fall. Oh,
back in the house and the house is packed how are you doing tonight everybody shout out to the confident intelligent and assertive men out there one love to the feminine beautiful inspirational ladies that's the fbi and the cia it's a little dark in here but you know what let's get some mood lighting let me turn off this loud air conditioner Big Shirley. Let's see if we can affect the lighting just a little bit better or even better. Let's see. Maybe we'll increase the exposure. Well, let's leave it there. I think that'll be fine. Because I think this is actually too much light. But I want to go ahead and get into this. Yeah, I don't know if I like this. It's throwing a shadow and carrying on like that. So I don't know, man. I, I, I like to have my lighting look right. So how's everybody doing? Did you have a good week? We're at the end of the week, ready to wrap it up. Get it done. Get it in. Get it in. Get it in. Get it in. 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 Get it in. Get it in. Get it in. 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 Is that better? Oh, yeah, I love it when everybody's like, you short. <laughs> oh, yeah, mama. All right. So here's what we're going to do. First off, hello, welcome. For those of you who don't know, my name is Kevin Samuels. I'm a professional image consultant. My job is to help men and women look good, smell great, and be the best, best version of themselves each and every day. But most of you have probably stumbled across my platform, my channel, on my interesting views on relationships, male, female, di interpersonal dynamics. That's what I call it. I'm not a dating coach, more or less like a, let's just call it like a, a social scientist of sorts. I've studied this stuff for the longest and even I've had overlap in my professional career, my personal life. Bottom line is you're here for a reason. Uh, and that reason is to find out the candle of the day, Laurier 62. It's always going to be a standby. And the fragrance of the evening is none other than Nasamato Pardon. This is by far one of the sexiest fragrances on the planet. I have a video talking about uh, fragrances that drive women wild, drive women nuts. And this is one of them. So I'm going to leave this right here. Nasamato Pardon. Now, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make sure that the engagement rate, the likes, the dislikes stay over 50%. If they don't stay over 50%, you will hear some of the most god awful noises you've ever heard and do it. Uh, I don't really want to do that. I just want to keep it moving. Um, and you know, I think I liked it better when the lights were a little low. So I'm gonna do my monologue the way I want it to. So every now and then, I just decide to go on one. And what inspired today was was several things. One. The amount of, excuse me, the amount of interactions I've had with women who are by any estimation mediocre or average. I have a video that I will be uploading, which reminds me, since I have some of you guys in the house, please people, especially if you're a fan of the channel, when I, when I upload a video on Instagram, don't if you upload my content, I'm going to just go to get your channel taken down. Stop doing that. I know some people are just like, I want people to see the advice. I'm not trying to make money off of it. But look, understand something, whether you agree or not, this is a business. And when you do that, that's bootlegging my content. I mean, when I when I finish up doing the video and somebody decides to upload it directly to YouTube, that's just being selfish. Don't do that. Because all it's going to happen is going to remove your channel. And you're messing with other folks' uh, money and opportunity. If you're a black man doing this, let me say this in particular. One of the reasons black men, it's hard to have anything is because we don't work together. What did I say on the Joe Budden podcast? We need black male media run by black men for black men, employing black men. When we do that kind of stuff, you're taking away money from a man. Why is that important? Well, shout out to, uh, let's look and see where it is right now. Shout out to uh, Joe Budden. When I was in uh, New York City, a uh, week before last, I slid by and we did a podcast, right? 
And while I was there, let's just see. Up, let's say in a week, it's done almost a million views. What does that tell you? That tells you when you're working on your purpose and doing things as a man, you can expect to get the outcomes you want. But what I find interesting is that, um, huh, how do I want to put this? So many mediocre average women seem to have an issue with the man making money doing the very things that they want to make money doing. So in other words, no different than Lizzo with this Captain America thing with the body positivity thing. It's, it's okay for Lizzo to be the size she is and she doesn't want anybody judging her or women like her, but yet they want hot men. They want attractive men. So it's a one way dynamic. And that is what I think we have seen far too much. Average at best, mediocre women wanting high value men, productive, competitive, successful men, the best of the cream of the crop of men. And it's time to talk about it. Why? Because you media, do, we, do mediocre women need some, tut some tutoring? Uh, I keep using this sector of words, mediocre, tutor, review. There's a channel called Mediocre Tutorial Reviews, and the brother does good content. And I reached out to him and said, I'm going to be using your channel name in some very interesting ways because we have many mediocre women who are in need of a good tutoring and a good review. So let's review, shall we? Number one, some of the biggest, my biggest critics of, of women are on platforms that they did not build. They're on platforms that they didn't build, places that they didn't build. And here's the problem. Just like a lot of modern women today, you're standing on the shoulders of men and have the nerve to talk about men. That's some funny stuff as far as I'm concerned. Why? Well, because in a man's world, the only thing that talks is results. The only way you can talk shit in man's world, really, is you got to have results. With modern women, they talk shit just for talking shit's sake, with no results. Sorry, sorry, ladies. If you're an average woman and getting average results, you have not earned the right to, to talk about anything. You can have an opinion, but why should anybody listen to it? Because look at what it's netting for you. I'm not laughing at Lizzo. I'm I'm talking about the hypocrisy. Show me the male. Show me the male equivalent of Lizzo, a a, a man who who is that way wanting uh, nines and tens and openly saying that he won't date anything less than that. That's the problem. So um, let's get into it. We got the likes up. Our, 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 our modern women, where do you, I asked this woman the other day on a video I'm going to upload tonight. And I said, take away sex. And what use are modern women to the average high value man? And then I asked one question. I said, ma'am, I want you to tell me what you bring to a high value, productive, competitive, successful man. She said, I don't need a high value man. I don't need a high value man. But when it got right down to it, huh, you, you, you got to watch the video. And I said, what do you bring to the table? This woman said, I'm funny. I'm witty. I can clean. I can cook. Okay. And a bunch of other white noise. And I said, all right, ma'am, if you took all that together and you and you looked at a salary chart and you tried to plot what you bring to the table against what a what, what your equivalent man should earn, round it to the nearest 10,000, what do you think you should get? And hand to God, she said at least $100,000. You cannot make this shit up. $100,000 what she thought she brought to the table. 
which is why. And I said, ma'am, you are an average woman with a biology degree. This woman is a leasing consultant at apartments. You know what? I wish I had my cable, my connection, but I'll show you better than I can tell you. This woman is just an average woman. Average woman. You know, cute, six feet tall, which is already going to be problematic, with a degree in biology. And she thinks that what she's bringing to the table should net her a top 10% earning man. So anyway, this is what the video will look like. That's pretty much the whole capacity. So I will upload it. And why that's important is because just like last week's video with the therapist and the counselor and this and that, all uh, women are uh, women are finally comfortable starting to say that look, I am an average woman, a mediocre woman. I don't want no mediocre. I don't want no mediocre. Average, mediocre, basic chick, and they are wanting extraordinary men. That is how we got here to begin with, is it not? That's the video that launched my career, as it were, the average at best video. When I said, ma'am, you're average at best. I said, average looking people get average looking people and average looking women get average looking men and live average living lives. But there were so many women that were just like, who are you to tell her that she's average? She said she was average. And the notion that somebody actually had the nerve to say, no, ma'am, average gets average. Above average gets above average and superior gets superior. It's called a sortative mating. But in our community in particular, we have average at best women, mediocre on a good day women thinking that no matter what they do. I mean, think about it for a second. Don't get mad at me. Think about it. From Boston to Washington, we've had women 250 pounds, 300 pounds. In uh, normal weight, high school graduate, college graduate. Think about the woman I talked about in Columbus with the Bonnet Chronicles. Another one. It's like, and what it is, gentlemen, is what it is, ladies, is no one's told you what your value really is. And that's what I want you ladies to understand. Put a value on it. How much of what you bring? The tail end of marriage, like what, what, what do you bring to the table? What do you bring to the table? What is it worth? What is it? What is it? Uh, we better get the lights up. You know what? What am I doing? What am I talking about? to do that every time i really shouldn't have to do that but here's an excerpt a salary on what you bring to the table mm -hmm. those things how much do you think it'll be worth no well, let's let's back it up a little bit that me or and, even... is, and honestly and this is what i mean man 
So, if you were to put a salary on what you bring to the table, mm -hmm. those things, how much do you think it'll be worth as far as what a man makes? If you say, what I bring to the table, all those things, should equate a man making about X a year, what would that be? I'd say 100 grand. <laughs> God damn it! You can't make this shit up! That's right, ladies and gentlemen. If you had to equate what you bring to the table as a salary, what would you think it is worth? And she said, I, I would say a hundred grand. One hundred effing dollars. You cannot make this shit up. Sorry, ladies. You don't have, you, you're not a hundred thousand dollars. You're not, it is not, N-O-T not. Y'all want to see it live and in color? Point, I didn't meet a husband who has a better career than, than me, or and even- what, And honestly, and this is what I mean, man. So, if you were to put- All right, let's do it this way, because I don't, I, I bring this cable that I needed. So let's see if I can do it this way. And I did this, and I and here's the thing, I don't want you guys to focus on, you know, her in particular. We need to talk about how it's gotten to this. Point. Yes. I cannot say what Girls, you can cook, whatever. I can cook. What else? I can cook, I can clean. Um, I can be supportive too as well. You know, like you said, I don't necessarily have a career of my own at this point. If I did meet a husband who has a better career than, than me. Or and even- what, And honestly, and this is what I mean, man. So, if you were to put a salary on what you bring to the table, mm -hmm. those things, how much do you think it'll be worth as far as what a man makes. If you say, what I bring to the table, all those things should equate a man making about X a year. What would that be? I'd say a hundred grand. <laughs> God damn it! You can't make this shit up! You think being a, holy shit, this is our, our women are, oh my God. That's the video you're going to see. And it gets worse. And it gets worse, not because the because this woman is a bad person. None of these women are bad people. But our, our culture, the world has told women they can have it all for being average. They've been told that each of them deserves the best of the world has to offer. And all you have to do is show up. This is why men, this is part of the reason why men are so confused because men have to actually go add value to make a demand. Women just show up. Men have to go acquire value. Women are born with innate value. And a lot of women push back on that and your innate value is your sex. But just like I said in that video earlier today when I told that woman, all right, imagine if I was Thanos and I could, and at a certain weight, women became invisible to all men outside of business transactions. How quickly would women moderate their weight so they could get back any kind of male attention? This is where we are at. Mediocre women. And this woman was a college graduate. But mediocre women today are in need of tutoring. And sadly, it has been proven, it's been shown that the women of the women are not up to the job. You're not up to it. Young women are coming in here in droves saying, I didn't learn this stuff. Women in droves are like, okay, that one was 25. She didn't learn it from her mother. There are no women in the, in the, in the world that's going to teach it because honestly, they look at you as their competition. Older women don't care about you. Younger women are replacing them. 
So like it or not, ladies, all things being equal, if you're going to get the kind of, you got to watch this video I'm going to upload. I'm going to upload it. Um, it's supposed to drop in the morning, but I may upload it after the show. Um, you guys got to understand, you ladies got to understand that you're waiting until 30 years old to try to figure men out. And then what you really bring into the table is nothing, nothing special, nothing special. Just showing up as me, just me. I'm only me. And then I will learn on the job. That is what so many women have said. I, as an average mediocre woman, am willing to let you tutor me to become your wife. What in the world is that supposed to, how is that supposed to help a man? That's what they, that's what a lot of them think. So ladies, are you a mediocre woman? Are you an average woman? Then how do you plan on going from being, uh, if you had to rank your wife skills, are they, do you have minimum wage wife skills? Do you have minimum wage relationship skills? Then how do you plan on becoming a high earner? A man has to go out and make himself competent because competence gets compensated. R ladies, how competent are you in relating with a man for a long period of time? That's my point. See, just like so many women feel like because they can deal with a man and hook up with a man, ladies, you're average at best. Go to the 24-year-old woman who said, why would we choose to line up with a brother because we got money and everything else and say, well, your great grandmother, your grandmother, your great grandmother, did they have more challenges exponentially more? And they did better with it. You've got more information, more opportunities, and you're exponentially worse. I, I think it's fair to say that dealing with the average, the average woman today between the ages of 25 and 35 are walking around like they are still in junior high or high school, emotionally, when it comes to relationships. Prenup. No, you better make yourself a trust. You better, prenups aren't that it. You better make yourself a trust. So ladies, instead of getting mad at men like myself, men like uh, MTR, men like all the other men who talk about relationships from men's point of view, instead of getting mad, calling us misogynists, and who hurt you, and all this other kind of stuff, when are you going to realize that you need relationship summer school? Some of you guys don't get to go take your summer off. Some of you need relationship summer school. And most of you need to be left back relationship several grades. Oh, my God. You're supposed to be going from junior high to high school, and your ass need to stay in the seventh grade. We don't do academic promotion in relationships, ladies, and you and relationships are reflective. That's why when I gave that example of you're picking with your, like that woman who talked about, I got all these high value men that would want me, but I didn't want to be a high value, his wife, because he was too old. Now it didn't matter that she was having sex with him and let him pay a bill, but when it came right down to it, she decided to go have a baby with a dude that was six years younger because, because what? Make it make sense, people. And then it's like, oh, okay, I'm in my late 20s, 30s. Now I'm going to figure it out. Uh, no. No. It's up to you to put yourself in on timeout. It is time for you to raise your hand and say, I need to be left back a grade. I need some tutoring. When I was not doing good in, in uh, I had made great, I had made A's and B's my entire academic career until I got to algebra. And the algebra was the first time I made a C on anything. And what I did is I needed, I found a tutor because the best I could get was a C. Many of you mediocre women need to, you need to tutor. You need a tutor. Are you a mediocre woman? You're getting mediocre results. And that's why I said, how many of you women tomorrow are going to be hanging out with your girlfriends? sitting at somebody's lunch or brunch somewhere on Sunday. The highlight of your week is hanging out with your girlfriends Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday brunch because you ain't got a, a, a husband prospect between the four of you. And you guys sit around with each other just reinforcing your mediocre status. I got a PhD. I'm a PhD.
I got a bachelor's. I got a bachelor from Spelman. I got a degree in marketing. I went to Georgia Tech. I went to OU. What, what you doing? Oh, I'm an accountant. I'm this, I'm that. You making fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars? You living all right? Ain't been to the gym since junior high. Talking all this, all this cap, and then you walk and you look at a woman with half your education, and she's got a husband and children and a smile on her face. And then you want to turn around and blame the men. These men are broken. These men are this. These men aren't the problem. It's you are mediocre when it comes to marriage. Mediocre marriage and reviews. <laughs> mediocre marriage and reviews. You're not wife material, are you? I don't know. Let's talk about it. How many of you women were trained on how to be a wife? Trained to be something other than mediocre with a man. And what makes you mediocre? And, and, oh, oh, Jesus, let's go in. And what makes you mediocre? You didn't even learn. You just come standard. You're for JJ. You didn't do nothing with it. You just have it. You just have it. Most of you don't even know how to use it. A lot of y'all don't know how to keep it clean and sanitized. Or even make it look appealing. It just there. Yeah, it just there. I said it just that way. It just there. Average, mediocre, basic. Don't want no mediocre. I don't want no mediocre. I don't want no mediocre. I don't want no mediocre. Hair did, nails did, everything did, did. And then you think when you get your eyes like, ooh, this dude over here is a blue collar dude. This guy, he ain't on my level. And that woman who said that was 25 years old. Shout out to Dr. Tia Son Johnson who said he has women in his class, 19 years old. And the men and women who are at an age matched, the men know they can't date the women because the women at 19, 20 years old automatically thinking they need a $100,000 man in college. Oh, yeah, we going there. So the problem is, you're mediocre? How do you... Oh, well, I can already see some of you with your necks rolling. Oh, I keep my my I keep my hot pocket clean and good. And it's good. How you know? How you know your stuff is really good? Every sister I've ever talked to swears she's sitting on the bomb.com. Sorry, a lot of y'all is mediocre and average in bed, too. Oh, yeah. I had this argument with a friend of mine. I told her, I was like, you do know men fake orgasms. You do know when not all men are actually climax. Sometimes it's just trash. And you just want to get up out of there. What? She couldn't get her mind around it until I had to call a bunch of Like, oh, yeah, I faked it before. What? What? I swear to God, modern women think just because you have a JJ. That balances the scales. Now, like I told that woman, a man has to go out and get a, 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 a become competent, get some high income skills, get out there, compete, make himself the best version of himself, do it for an extended period of time, focused on one path. And all you have to do is show up and be funny, clean. Oh, and here's another thing. And I told her the other day, and everything that modern women do for a man, they say you're bringing to a man, is all contingent upon how you feel. Because the moment you don't feel like you get what you, the moment you don't feel like it, you turn it off. I rebuke. <clears throat> oh, you you out here making three hundred thousand dollars a year, and you making everything work, and you a rainmaker in your world, uh, but you didn't uh, buy me the right kind of flowers on Valentine's Day, so I'm gonna hold it. I rebuke. <clears throat> No, 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 not going to work. Men are, re men are getting to the point to where they are rebuking you mediocre, average, basic chicks. That is why your Tinder and your Bumble or whatever accounts you have going on are humming right now. Because at best, you are a swipe left or swipe right. You are not a swipe wife. Oh, shit, I said it. Oh, you will never be swiped to wife. Oh, oh, I know it hurts. Oh, it burns! Oh, it burns! Oh. You will never be, you will never be swiped to wipe. Look at him out there. I don't have to be swiped to wife. I got a career. I got this. I got that.
Uh, I can go freeze my eggs, and when I find a man who's worth on my level, then I can go ahead and decide to in vitro fer. I can in vitro. I hate him. <laughs> it ain't my fault. It ain't my fault that you will not be swiped wife because you decided to go. I'm a PhD. It all started with you deciding to put, deciding to become an individual. Modern women in general, black women in particular, you are better at being an individual than anything else. I said this the other day. It's almost like in our culture, black women, you're like a separate race. Do you belong to us anymore? And what you're really good at doing is being by yourself, alone, individual. But talk about how you work with a man and it's cricket ass quiet because you don't know. And it is time for you to put your pride down and say, I am failing relationship 101. I am mediocre and I need relationship tutorial. And who's going to teach you? Not the women. Because they don't have a bunch of single men that can, that can hook up with you. You got to come to the men to find out what the men want from you. Not to the men who are lying to you and cheating you and telling you about your crowns and books and carrying on. You need to come to the very men that you are calling cruel and mean and everything else because we're the ones that will tell you what men want. That is what it comes right down to. Now, the question is, even if we get, even if you learned, even if somebody said, here's the work that's done, are you going to do it? Or are you comfortable just being by yourself and many of you are just like this. I, I, what? What? I don't, I, I got to go to the gym. Now, understand, last Friday, we had women arguing about smiling. Simple smiling. What do you think is going to record? What do you think is going to happen if you actually ask some women to go to the gym? You see how the lights went red? That's right. S what? What'd you say to me? Okay, how about you just learn how to cook? Well, now, see, if you ask them for some sex or something, oh, that, that's something we can do. We can do sex. How about we go travel? Oh, we can travel? Oh, I like traveling. Okay. What about we go in a restaurant? We can do that. We can go in a restaurant. What about we go out on the town and party? Oh, I love that. But if it looks like work... Hell to the no. Hell to the no. To the no, no, no. Yeah. Hmm. So, anywho, ladies, it ain't my fault. It ain't my fault. And y'all can say whatever you want to, but when it gets right down to it, the men you want want something in return. And they want more than just your VJJ, they want more than your hot pocket. They want more than what you think. You, Jesus sage Christ. They want more than the same thing you gave to uh, Tyrone, Jermaine, Brad, Enrique. You passed that thing around so much. Why is it even special? When's the last time it had a tune-up? Have you had a JJ rejuvenation? I mean, seriously. If it's your biggest or best asset, when's the last time you actually had an evaluation of it? Seriously. Seriously. When? Win, win, win. But you know what, ladies? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. But I want to hear from you ladies who think you're, think you're more than mediocre, who think you don't know what the hell you talk about. I got my, my bachelor's, my master's, my PhD. I can, I don't, I, I, I want to hear where I'm wrong. I want to hear the disagreements from the women. Where do you think I'm wrong? I don't want to hear from the men. Do not call in if you're a man. And ladies, only call in if you have disagreements. Because if you don't have a disagreement, I'm going to just go on to the next person. And you cannot use the excuse, I didn't hear. I just joined in. What's the topic? What's the conversation? You need to be, here's a mobile device. You need to make sure your phone is sitting down. 
not walking all around the house doing this shit. Sit your phone down and have a conversation like you are. Because I want you to understand every woman that does this coming in, mediocre, average, basic. That's what basic chicks do. Don't be basic. Don't be mediocre. It's time for the tutorial. Let's get it. If I'm wrong, if I know what I'm talking about, if I'm off base, you got a disagreement, ladies, about this topic or anything else I talk about, bring it. Because unlike some of them, the women who sit around and cap, cap, cap talking shit, when you have results, you don't go anywhere. No, you come to me. You come. That's another thing. You ladies got to understand you're going to have to humble yourself and come to the men. Because if not, where else you plan on getting it from? And see, that's a big problem right there. A lot of women are like humble. Yeah, well, you don't you don't have to humble yourself. Keep your pride. Be proud, be wrong, and end up dying alone. But before that, we're gonna get right into it. Come on, Asia. Show them what a woman who actually is happy looks like. See, I'm gonna show you guys some things that. I'm going to give you some visualizations because I like to not just point out issues, but I also like to provide solutions. One of the first solutions, why don't you get in shape? Those things are called pearls. Money work. Where her shoulders are out. Those things are called collarbones. Say it with me. Collar bones. See, she has something called a waist. Mm-hmm. And notice when she stands still, her thighs don't rub together. Right. No rubby, rubby thighs. Look, that's about something you could actually carry across the threshold. Don't get mad at me. See, even if she were to gain 20, 30 pounds in pregnancy, knock that right out. Look, look, see? Look at that waist go. And this thing on her face is called a smile. My, see? She's not bearing her fangs. That's called a smile. And that's called sexy and sassy. While being sophisticated. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, what? Huh? I'm sorry. Stop frowning. Oh no, she's smiling again. Uh. There goes the smile. Uh oh. Smile. Uh, back when women smile. I know y'all be like, I'd smile too. I can fit inside of a dress size four. Clap it up. I'm thin. I'm not a mediocre chick. And I got a cute ass. My stomach's flat. Color bones. I can smile. Natural hair. I'm good. <laughs> Oh, I'd hate you too. I'm sorry. All right. Well, you know what? Every man wants a woman whose stomach is flat enough to put a Monopoly board down on and park, and park place and boardwalk ain't over here and other side over here. If if we got to turn the the uh, board game upside down to fit your stomach, that means we can't play. Because, <laughs> you know, if you open the board, it lays this way, like, eh, eh. 
But to fit your stomach, we'd have to flip the board over so it go like this. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, come on, ladies. Come on. Mediocre. I don't want no mediocre. I don't want no mediocre. I don't want no mediocre. Shout out to all the men out there who's finally standing up and saying thank you. See, here's the thing, gentlemen. Well, you're going to have to do as well is you got to stop dealing with mediocre women. Stop rewarding them. Stop saying, oh, well, I'd rather be with her. I mean, she's good for a quick. Nope, nope. Your hand would be better than this. Come on, ladies. I don't want no mediocre. 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 So while we're waiting on the ladies to call in, I'm going to play another part of this video. Ladies, the call line is open. It's open. Call line is open. Call line is open. But I want to get some of this video. Um, I would not say so. Just because I think there's just too many people in the world for it to be over. You know what I mean? All right. Yeah, I got all kind of technology going on over here. That's right, damn it. Yeah. This 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 fucking weirdo. Hey man. Uh somebody come get their kid. Somebody come get their little that kid. This is this look that's that little short bus boy. Mm mm mm. for it to be over, you know what I mean? What do you mean to many people in the world? I mean, the opportunities to meet someone new um, or someone hey, who's where do you live? Stay. I live in Philly. Most people don't live in Philly. They don't, that's that's very true. Um, slim pickings here, I'd say, but in comparison, you know, if I travel, if I really want to meet somebody. When's the last time you've been out of the country? Um, 2013, I think. We're, we're See, one of the big problems with modern women, you're, you're entirely too prideful. And if you're that damn prideful, it's going to be hard to humble yourself to get to where you need to be. Here we go. Hello. Hi. How are, How you? are you? I'm good. How are I'm you? I'm doing well. Good. Is this, um, hold on, I hear a sound. Turn off your video in the background. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting it together. All right. So what's your disagreement? Um, I do believe that some people do have kind of too high standards, but I think a lot of black women kind of get lumped into that. There are, I have faith that there are a lot okay, better uh, black on. women. First off, how old are you? How old are you? 25. Are you married? No, I'm not. Seeing, are you dating anyone? I'm seeing someone. So, you say a lot of black women get lumped into that. Go ahead. Yeah, just lumped into being mediocre or difficult, not friendly. Lumped in that by who? That hasn't been my experience. Lumped in by who? By a lot of, like, YouTubers. I won't really call out anyone, but... And it, and, and they just and they're just making stuff up, huh? I wouldn't say they're making it up. Maybe that's their experience, but I'll just uh, have to disagree with that experience. Where do you live? I live in Michigan. What part? Right outside of Detroit. So, um, how long have you been watching my show? About maybe a month or so, but pretty mm -hmm. frequently. Okay. So, uh, I let, I have conversations in real time with the women. I've, I've seen. See what I'm calling? I'm calling. I'm calling on what you're saying. I'm calling. I'm saying it's bullshit. Okay. You're, you're entitled to your opinion. opinion it's but... like, well, I think a lot of women get thrown up into that position. Okay. Well, then defend what you said. I, I've show evidence. People that I know show evidence. You just said something. Okay. Well, I can offer a in? different perspective. Um, I'm a smiley person, but um, I guess to go back on that smile conversation, um, I'm yeah, li living in Detroit. You are you know? a smiley person. 
I spent two hours talking to black women who didn't even, who felt offended by smiling. So let's do this. Take it outside of you and your friend group. Okay. And yeah, and I, if I take it outside of me and my friend group, I can just offer a perspective for them, um, especially like being in the Detroit area where I think a lot of black women don't feel protected and hold safe. On, hold on, hold on, so, hold on. Hold on. You can't just mm-hmm. say things like that and keep it moving. What do you mean don't feel protected? Protected by whom? By, I mean, I think our main protector should be black men. We're, okay, you're I right. Think. Where's your husband? Yeah. I don't have one. Then you shouldn't be protected. So you don't think that the black community should stand up for each other? Nope. Nope, because the black women okay. don't. Black I'd women have don't. To no, I'll tell you why. That. No, don't just roll on. No, no, I'll tell you why. Because black women like yourself, mm-hmm. black women, like yourself, when, when, if you're unmarried, unmoored, you shouldn't be protected. That's what you fought for. Where's your husband? He's your first line of protection. <laughs> He's your first line of protection. Where's your husband? Okay, that's the first line, but... I mean, no, that, no, 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 that's the be... primary line. That is the primary mm-hmm. line. See, if women like yourself had more than opinions and you've had husbands, we'd have an entire neighborhood full of women who had husbands like we did prior to 1965. So that's when you had protection. You got a bunch of single unmarried women. You've got no protection. Uh, remember, we're talking about women who have a, who are offended by the notion of even smiling. So when you guys come over here talking this protection shit, I'm sorry. You got to, that is, if you just, if you watch my videos, I don't even know how you can say that with a straight face. Okay. Okay. I get it. So even if you don't think we deserve to be protected. By no, I didn't say you didn't deserve to be protected. I, said, I didn't say you didn't deserve to be protected. Unless, I said, I said you, your protection is your husband. Okay. And then yeah, after but that, I'm saying and by then the after black, that, black it's the part. men of your family. Yeah. Like okay, every other race of women. These, Okay. Yeah. Every other race of women, who protects them? I feel like they have more of a sense of unity. So uh-uh. that's not what any, I asked. That's not what I asked. I'm going to ask it again. Protect who protects other women? Their husbands, just yeah, their family, like maybe their brother or uncle would be next. And then and that's who and stop. That's in their stop, race. Stop, I think stop, also, stop, 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 stop. Yeah. No, no. And that's how it's supposed to happen. That's how it's supposed to happen. Okay, I agree with that. Like that's who should, that's the hierarchy of it. But I don't think it stops there. Just family. Sure, I does. Think people should still. What percentage of protection? Should, black men. Okay, what percentage of protection should come outside of your the men of your family? Okay, can we? Like say respect, not even just protection. Well, no, well, no, we're talking. No, 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 no. We're not gonna switch it up. I want to know what percentage of protection should come out from the men outside of your family. If if you're not with a man that's in your family, you should. That's not what I asked. That's not what I asked. That's not what I asked. Uh, Maybe about thirty percent. Thirty percent. Thirty percent of your protection should come from the men of your family. Okay. I'm saying outside of the family, 30%. So 70 for the Thir- men. And so the 70% should come from the men of your family. Mm-hmm. Seven zero should come from the men of your family. Right? Yes. That mm-hmm. is a hell of a lot of protection. And that's what no, yeah, that's what most societies have. That is what most societies have. Women are, who are married and have men in a family have, a, have protection of greater than 50%. But when you have an 80% out of wedlock like childbirth rate and no husbands and one in four of you will be married, look at the numbers. One in four will be married. Isn't that very close to that 30% out of an unprotected rate? 26% of black women will yeah, marry in their lifetime. Marriage is a big problem in our community. I would Yeah, it's the big problem that. is, no, 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 no. Marriage is a big problem in our community because you ladies don't stay in your relationships. And then also what causes ladies to leave. That's bullshit. Relations. No, no. See, you can see what you've just proven. You have to do much better than just talking points. This is another mediocre woman. So I'm going there, man. If you're going to just keep talking okay. points, it's going to be a long day. 
Because everything that's come out of your mouth has been deflection. No I accountability from Will. Offer yeah, you another perspective because you said the I don't care, but I don't want you. I don't want a feminist perspective. I don't care about that. Go, go over. You can go anywhere else and give that perspective. That perspective has ruined our our community. Your perspective is no accountability for women. No, I, I do believe some women are should be held accountable. No, 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 some actions. all. Yeah, but we don't hold 100% of the the failures of our relationships and marriages in the black community. We're not always 80% of divorces are filed in black silent. America are filed by women. Okay, that's the divorces, but what's causing these divorces? I think we can't just look at Women that. filing divorce is what's calling divorce. Are you fucking kidding me? Are they are they filing divorce Women filing divorce is causing divorce. By the man? Women filing, don't talk over me. Women filing divorce is causing divorce. Deal with that. Deal with that point. Did, was your grandmother married? Okay. Yes, she was. How long? Um, her situation is a little different. She's still married, actually, but separated. How long? So since she maybe was about 22, so what, 50 years or so? Women filing divorce causes divorce. Your grandmother's still married. That means she didn't but file for divorce. Ever. That means she didn't file for divorce. Accountability is kryptonite to modern women. And logic, it, just don't get it. What do you think you're going to accomplish by coming over here just about these same talking points? I don't. I haven't heard these perspectives on the show yet, so I'm sorry if I missed that. Those talking points. These but. are the talking points, oh, ma'am. These are the talking points that have destroyed our community. This all you've heard is that what you're saying is why as part of the reason our community is so fucked up. Why do we need more of that? What I'm saying about um, looking more into the root of why black men and black women can't stay together. Uh, yeah, because black women leave. More than, more than just because black women leave men. their relationships. But why aren't white women leaving their relationships? Or uh, and we're talking race? about black women. See, see, see what we just are, happened, class. See what just happened, class. Too. Do not, don't talk over me. I'm gonna tell you one more time, and then I'm gonna get real ugly with you. I don't do that, young lady. How old are you? I'm 25. Why do you why do you think it's all right to when I'm talking you just talk over me? I I was actually just finishing my thought when you started but, but talking. I'm, but if I'm the, the host the of the show, the if I'm the host of the show, see, it's funny. Go back about 5 minutes ago and this is the same woman talking about protection and respect. But this is what it means. Even a 25-year-old woman feels like she should is in a place enough to where I'm going to finish my thought no matter what you say. And that's exactly why you will end up where you are. Because you are the reflection of so many women. No accountability. Deflection. It's everybody else's fault. Then when you ask a question about a black woman, you want to ask about, well, what about white women? What about ism? This is what, and, and older black women, this is what you've raised. This is what you've raised. So when you're asking your son, where's his wife and where are your grandchildren? When he says, because I can't find a woman worth marrying, this is what he's talking about. And then when you see her and she looks nice and friendly until you sit down and listen to what's going on in her head and there'd be no peace here. I don't know. I mean, I've been told that I'm very peaceful. I'm very level-headed and pretty chill. Mm -hmm. By whom? By everyone. You could ask anyone that I know. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't consider myself to be mediocre, but I'm just calling into the show because, you know, I usually value your I'm talking about what's coming out of your mouth is mediocre. It's the same stuff. It's the same stuff. You're not holding women strictly accountable for what they do. 
What are okay? How about this? What are black women accountable for, strictly, by themselves? For the way that we carry ourselves and Such the way as? that we treat others. Such as, example. I mean, some women don't carry themselves well, black women, but a lot of us do have confidence, are friendly, are respectful, helpful, and active in the community. I think those are good ways to carry yourself. So you just turned Polite, a negative into a veiled. So you just turned a negative into a veiled positive. I'm just, I'm an optimistic. You just turned a negative. You said, I said, what are black women accountable for strictly? And you said the way we carry ourselves. I said, okay, give me some examples. And then you went on to turn what you framed as a negative into a veiled positive. Uh Uh-oh, it's the same shit. (laughs) Even though negative is positive, you cannot make this up, people. I'm not saying that black women do no wrong. I never said well, that. Well, you haven't said any wrong yet. And even when you did say wrong, you turned it into a positive. I just didn't dwell on the negative. Would you like me to you focus didn't, on no, you the didn't, negative? No, you didn't. Seven? Yeah, yeah, okay. Whoever's dating her, I hope you, I hope you uh, got life insurance. I hope you got life insurance. Hello? All right, she's not paying attention. Hello? Not paying attention. Don't get it. So, why is that so disheartening? It's because when they come in with the hi, hi, you gotta listen. You gotta listen with the ears, don't look at the picture. And the stuff that was coming out of our mouth was the same typical stuff. It's not our fault. When we do something wrong, there's always a root cause. There's always an explanation. It's already just, just, yeah. Black men are sick Black men are sick of Black men are sick of it. Black men are sick of it. Just sick of it. And I, I flushed that up there so you guys could see this this little weirdo. It's just a straight up, just yeah, something's wrong with that boy. All right, you're gonna have to unmute yourself. Hello. Hello. How are you? Uh, put you back on. Hello. Hi. How are you? Your volume's not up. Can you hear me now? You're barely. I don't know where your microphone is. Say something. Hello. Your microphone is too low. Uh, let me, can I get my headphones? All right. I'm gonna wait and go back to somebody else until you come back in. Yeah. Do 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 do. I shouldn't have this much problem trying to see. All right. Let's go. Hello. Uh, hi, Kevin. Hi. Hi, how are What's you? What's your disagreement? Today? Um, it, it's more of like a counter, if that's okay. Well, counter to About, what? Um, um, mediocre men. Mediocre what? Mediocre men, right? So we're talking mediocre about like men. the mediocreness of women. Mediocre, no, no, I want to be clear on what you said. You said mediocre men. Well, is, well, is that yeah, what you said? I, is that what you topic. said? Is that so what you said? Is, is that what no, you said? So the topic is yes. No, no, is no, no, said. no, 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 no. Is that what you said? Yes. All right. How tall? How old are you? I am twenty six. Twenty six. How tall are you? I am five eight. Dress size? That I'm not aware of. We don't. I'm I'm from Canada, so we don't do dress sizes. Okay, how much you weighed the last time you weighed yourself? And I know they do dress sizes in Canada. I was one eighty five the last time I weighed myself, so I am over. One eighty five. Well aware. Yes. 
When was the last time you weighed yourself? That was probably about two days ago at mm. work. Yeah. So why when our entire broadcast, I'm talking about mediocre women, do you want to come in and try to change it to men? So my thing with that is there is a highlight on women. Um, but Where? Just Where? Also me Where is there a highlight on women? Well, I'm quite aware of it. I'm not. Where, 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 but I'm asking you, where is there a highlight on women? There's not because there's too much. Um, but you said there's a highlight on women and I'm saying where? Well, on your broadcast for one. One freaking broadcast on YouTube. Oh, and I think in most people who are realistic about everyday life, you know. Like, no, I don't think you're being realistic. There's not a highlight on women. I'm realistic towards those senses. So you want to go all the way from women being told you can have everything and no microscope being really placed on women in any real way. And I did an entire oh, broadcast no, no, no. on no, I, I, no, 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 no. Then I talk about mediocre women needing help and you want to go straight past the women into the men. Go for it. Let's hear about what, what's I, wrong with the men. Honestly, I probably just came in a little too late to the broadcast. I just saw the, uh, the YouTube link. I saw the topic uh, okay. and I saw the, that it was, you know, are women mediocre? Yeah. So are are they? Kind of are, are modern women mediocre? Oh, absolutely. All right. Absolutely. You know, with um, the constant, you know. Are you in that? Are you in that category? Currently, yes. Currently, have you ever was been I not mediocre? Have you ever been not yeah. been mediocre? Oh, absolutely. When? Uh, probably when I was between the ages of 18 and 22. I think that uh, was like the And how much did you weigh then? Premium. How much did you oh, weigh I then? I was 120. I was 115, 120. Okay, and so why, the, why, the, why the doubling of the weight? You know, that, that yeah, again, personal stuff, uh, lost in myself, not mm. caring. Mm. Um, and, just... And you, all right. Right, like straight up, it was. Uh, I I stopped giving a damn. You know, I wasn't working as hard. I stopped going on runs and things like that. Um, and during that so, time, have you had sex? During what time? When I was younger. Or during the early? time where you know, during the time you fell off, were you having sex at any time during that time? Yeah, for sure. You know. And uh, that's the problem, guys. You continue to stick your penis in this. That's the problem. That's why they can get on the camera and start talking about mediocre men when as big as a planet, smoking a cigarette. I mean, I, I did. I mean, what am I supposed to do with this? I'm just like, okay. I cannot honestly sit back and listen to a woman who's built like the planet ego talk about mediocre men while she's smoking another motherfucking Newport. Are you serious? So to the young lady I told you, the, the first young lady, look at what we've got. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we got problems with men. They're mediocre. But the fact that somebody decided to have sex with her, she's like, oh, well, whatever. All right, let's go. Hello. Hi, can you hear me now? A little bit better. Go ahead. Okay, I'll talk loud. So in the beginning, you were saying, you know, come with a disagreement. So really, my only disagreement about what you say is that high value men can cheat. High value men should do what? You said that they're able to cheat. You said in a marriage, you know, cheating is you know necessarily okay. Is that what I said, or is that what you took away? That could be what I took away. No, yeah, because it's not what I said. So I'm not going to own that. How old are you? Twenty-five. It's not what I said. 
How, how often have you actually watched my broadcast? Um, I've watched a lot of your videos. I've been watching it for a few weeks now, but I've watched, you know, a lot of your old content as well. So <laughs> Planet Ego. So what did I say about high value men? High value men have what? Options. Right. We don't cheat. They exercise options. Now, where did I ever say that exercising of an option is it, is it mandatory? Inevitable? No. Right. So, so I'm not understanding your point. Like, well, I just say, I'm just, you know, when you say it's inevitable, so then what does that mean, you know, in a relationship? I've never said it's inevitable. I've never said it's inevitable. So, I mean, you, uh, you, you ladies don't listen. You listen with your feelings. The words you, the things you're saying, I have never said. And then I, when I step you back through the things I do say, that's not what you, that's not what you said at the beginning. I said, high value men don't cheat. They exercise options, but I have never said it is mandatory that they're going to exercise an option or it's inevitable. That's going to happen. Never have said that. And as a, and as a joinder to it, I said, I've never cheated in a relationship. How do you ladies miss that? So when you say exercise options, like what does that necessarily mean? But... Meaning a high value man has options. That's it, has options. It's cheating when you guys do it. Give you a case in point. Give you a case in point. When you guys, I mean, no, listen, listen, because you apparently didn't understand. So I'm going to give you an example. The deal between men and women has traditionally been your sexual attention, your body, your access to your body, right? Right? In exchange for my resources and protection, right? Mm -hmm. That's the general basic exchange between men and women. I give, you give. I, you give me exclusive access to your body. I give exclusive access to my resources, right? So when a woman gives access to her body to another man, you are breaking our fundamental agreement. Now, you know what would be cheating on a woman as a man? If I went and provided for another woman to the same level or higher than I'm providing for you and you're my wife. So you want so in that point, you wouldn't say that if you're in a committed relationship or a marriage and you're, you know, let's say the man is providing that sexual situation to another woman, that's not cheating. It's it's for the man. Yeah, did you you just get right past the did you even you didn't even acknowledge what I just said? You didn't even say, Oh, I see, I don't see, I agree, I don't agree. You just went on and said, Okay. If it would does it bother you more that a man's having sex with another woman or would it bother you more if he's buying her a Mercedes and you got a Mercedes? He's buying her a home and you got a home. Which will bother you more? The second point. Thank you. Because that's the fundamental relation. See, you ladies today want everything. You want exclusive, you want a man to give you exclusive access to his, his, his time, his resources, and you want to be the exclusive sexual partner to him. Well, that's fine. But where in where in primates do primates uh, the, the are monogamous? Where in mammals are mammal of males of the species typically monogamous? No. All right. So here are the options. If you don't like the fact that the kind and caliber of man that you may be attracted to other women worldwide find him attractive, then don't deal with him. Because the only thing that's going to happen is, let's say you marry your high value man, right? And you're 25? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In 10 years, you're not going to be as hot as you are today. He'll be hotter. He'll be better with age. He increases with age as a man. Women decrease. But you, your expectations increase while your sexual value is decreasing. Women used to understand this and say, as long as he's not bringing home any outside disease, outside babies, putting the family at risk, whatever, boys will be boys and men will be men. 
especially if you want a certain caliber of man. All right. If that's not what you want, then I ask, why not just get an average guy? I mean, I don't typically date average people. And I also saw my parent. I mean, my dad is a high value man, according to your standards. And, you know, I saw their relationship. And so I have that example. So that's what I'm kind of. Right. And your mother and father are still married. Mm-hmm. And did she have to work? No. Mm-mm. And uh, does, what kind of car does she drive? BMW. Uh huh. So has your father ever exercised any options? No. Do you know that for sure? Yeah. How? Because they've talked about it. And I, he's like, I mean, he's an elder in our church, and he's, I just know. Okay. Church. Really uh-huh. And if he did, do you think your mother would have left him? Yeah. <laughs> naive. Naive. Absolutely naive. So in other words, you want a high value man. Good luck with that. And what, but I want you guys to remember the people who think I'm wrong. Remember what she said. Average man ain't even her vocabulary. So y'all got no problem having your standard. Why can't you date an average guy? I mean, what do you what do, did you go to college? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What did you graduate in? Bachelor's of Science. Psychology. And what? And what? Uh, well, technically, it's all the science. Huh? Social science. Social science. Like sociology, political science, what? It's pretty much just a degree to get a degree. It's, it's general of, studies. Pretty much, yeah. So you got so you got the rich girls degree. It's useless. It's useless. Social That's science is like is right up there with communications and hard history. It's really not there's nothing you can go do with that degree other than get into a professional school. Or just start your career. And what? Well, I'm in sales, software sales. But you didn't need to go to college for that. Well, technically, the, I mean, all the companies no, that I've worked for. No, no ma'am, no. I've been in sales, I was in sales all my career. You didn't need it. They hired you because you're pretty or cute. They didn't hire you because you're, you're a stellar degree in social science. Social science is a bullshit degree. You know it and I know it. Let's be realistic. I so I know that. you went so you went to school for a social science degree. Did you pay for it? No. Or daddy paid for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And you with your average ass degree trade on your looks. But if you actually had I have a lot of good skills. Excuse me? I have a lot of really good skills. I mean, I work my way up. You're 25. Faster than You're 25. Yeah. You don't have that many skills. Your skills is I'm cute and you trade on your looks. That's fine. That's what that's what you have to work with. But if you were 25 and average looking would you have the same expectation of a high value man who's strictly loyal to you i probably wouldn't even try and you know date that that's not what i asked i asked you would you have the same expectation of laying in a high value man who's strictly loyal to you thank you so again prove my point it's because of your looks you th- think you can demand higher, but understand something. Just like you don't deal with men who are not high value or, or make a certain amount, they don't deal with women who are below average. And here's the thing. High value men are rare. Attractive women are not. You're a dime a dozen. Can I ask you a question? Did we accept that, though? And a man has to make himself high value. A woman just has to retain her value. Just not mess it up. Don't get fat. Don't 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 run up your body count. Don't do something drastic to your looks. Just retain value. So go ahead. So I may or may not have looked at your LinkedIn. So I noticed that you were in sales and you said that, you know, I mean, I could get the job that you started with. So what when you say that you know i have an average job and you know i'm 25 with no skills but i 
Work What's the question? Up and I'm, my question is, why do you say that if you don't know where I'm at in my career? And because you can, there's only so much you can cram. There's only so. Cause first of all, because there's only so much experience or wisdom you can cram into 25 years, and you've been in college until you graduated. You've been in your career at best what four years? I graduated early, so five. At be, how long you've been in your career? Five. At five years. So that just entirely, you're really, and how long does it take? And have you been promoted yet? Yes. Did you start, what level did you start at? I started at Enterprise and then I worked my way up there to a branch manager and then I moved into software sales. Right. And now I'm an executive. A, a, an executive, an account executive. Mm -hmm. Right. So what's the next step? the manager of the team like a sales manager exactly so account exec well typically it goes junior executive account executive major account executive and then those two are the entry-level sales roles and then manager so in, like i said you don't have that many skills yet you just you have you're a green belt in sales you're a white belt when you started you're in my world now it has nothing to do with you it has everything to do with how old you are and how long you've been in the business Okay. You cannot be you. Can, okay, that's a question, ma'am. You are in a pretty. You have pretty privilege. That will wane. Don't think you can negotiate a multi-million dollar deal and get exclusive access to a high value man unless you're going to find a man who is extremely moral and religious like your father. Most are not. And if that's not okay. Date an average man, but see, you're too good for that. Have a good day. I don't, pretty don't get you that far in my book. It just gets you into the dance. Hello. Wow. Hello. How are you, Mr. Samuels? I'm good. You might want to back up a little bit. Okay. You might want to, okay. There you go. There you go. Am I good? I'm good. How okay. old are you? How old are you? I'm an old lady. I don't know how old that is. How old is that? I'm 42. Uh, I'm 10 years older than you, so that's that's good. What's your disagreement? My disagreement is that um, I found that your statistics are skewed. They're they're incorrect. Okay, that's fine. Are they generally right? Are they generally right? Well, the one before before we be, be, before we start slicing and dicing the numbers, are they generally right? No. What which one is not? One, one in four, four black women will marry. That is only true with women between twenty five and twenty nine. Uh -huh. It shows uh, the census shows the same statistic shows that women that are fifty five by age fifty five. That's a different. Women, that is a different number because you're also factoring in multiple generations, ma'am. Let me ask you before we I'm, before we start playing the numbers game. The ultimate point is fitness for relationships. Where's your husband? I'm working on it. Uh-huh. How tall are you? Five foot seven. I'm a big girl. Play your horn. Dress size. I'm gonna play my I'm gonna play my horn, but I'm asking my questions. How tall are you? Five foot seven. Dress size? Size eighteen. How much did you weigh the last time you weighed yourself? Two hundred and thirty. You know, I think some people know how to do this. Because see, what I think is interesting is women like yourself would rather come in and slice and dice a number than slice and dice some vegetables and run. You ask for a disagreement and I disagree. Disagreement is wrong. no, your disagreement, I, I no, your disagreement was how it, the statistic is the statistic. You want to talk about this segment versus that segment. And I said, is it generally right? Meaning the ultimate point of the statistic is one in four of you will marry, meaning you're at the bottom. It doesn't matter if it's 29 or this or 55 or that. The bottom point is you're not fit for marriage because most of you aren't even fit. How about May that I one? 80%, 80% of you are overweight. Is that an accurate statistic? Yes, but 87 of us will marry by age 55, and that's the no, truth. No, you won't. 
even your mother married at no, 50. that's a different. And see, that's and that and see, no, this is and that's what I'm saying. She is trying to slice it across different general uh, generations, and you cannot factor in baby boomers, Generation X, millennials, and zennials. That that is the that is the and ladies understand what she's trying to do. She's trying to give you an out. Because you're talking about silent generation, generation X, and baby boomers who were raised under a different culture. Not you, ma'am. You're 42. Google when was the last me. time you were when was the last time you were engaged? Um working on it now. When was the last time you were engaged? Ever? I was never engaged. No All kids. right. Okay. So this is my point. Shame, insults, guilt, and here we're gonna factor in the need to be right. Ma'am, guess what? You have all the stats. Your numbers are perfect. Your numbers are right, mine are wrong. And the outcomes are going to change. The, the numbers are going to, but, but it's, a, it's a meaningless disagreement. The ultimate, numbers? the ultimate, Max? the ultimate, the ult, no, the ultimate point is the same. No, my, my number was right. The way you want to look at the number is not. You want to look at it. You want to look at it in a more granular way to, to, to make a point of what? If you're going to tell black women 87, there's an 87% chance that they'll be married. She ain't even there yet. Look at the problem right there, folks. That's it right there. That's the problem. I got beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, lamb, rams, hogs, dogs, chicken, turkeys, rabbits. You name it! <laughs> That's the problem right there. Doesn't matter how you do it. Is it well? Well, no, no. We want to sit back and discuss. Yeah, uh huh. Last time you had, I don't have that, but I got the numbers. Mm hmm. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. And why I do that that way? I'm gonna tell you why. Because women like her are always looking for any little daylight to squeeze through because that's all it can squeeze through is daylight. So that's why I become, that's why I say what I do because if you leave wiggle room, what's the ultimate point? You're right on the stats, man. Well, well, we'll just say it all. No, this isn't The Economist. This isn't CERN. And we're not having to sit back and quote a stat. This And it's funny, men, funny, Think about how slick and loose they play with the. When we talk about the stats regarding them, it has to be down to the the, the precise integer. But when they talk about black men being gay, downloaded, oh, they're slick and loose. When you talk about men, we talk about men. Oh, the general will do. You talk about men. It's, it don't matter. It's this or that. If you don't do, it, just get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. I'm just like, you cannot make this shit up. Now, what would be like to be, well, <laughs> you can't make it up. I'm sorry. <laughs> so to the first woman that called, who said, I think that these generalizations and black women get lumped into this and that. Really, ma'am? Really? even though it is disagreements. What's missing today, as far as I'm concerned, my opinion, is just good faith with our women. And I'll be honest, I've overheard more women say they, they're fine with being by themselves till they die. I'd rather do that than actually have to submit or do this or do that. And, you know, and this is what's going to come down to an individual choice for women. Because unfortunately... For a lot of our women, it, it, for a lot of our women, it's done. They've chosen their path. And it's their choice. And the amount of work that anybody has to do, they have to decide whether or not it's worth it. And see, there are no guarantees. And unfortunately, women in our culture have been told, don't matter what you do, somebody will... Here, Here's the thing. When you talk about the weight issue, 
the the common refrain is from from women is always this somebody somewhere like it that's the common refrain as if that should matter so yeah I think your facts, your statistics, I'm, I'm going to still use the same ones. Factoring in my mother's generation, which uh, which was my, my my mother's generation, and she's one of her other sisters did not marry, but that's a generation that does have the cookbook. And they did learn how to do all those things. Factor in generation X, that's not an 87% chance that they'll be married. You can't make this shit up, man. All right, people. So for the rest of the time, ladies, here's the thing. Disagreement time. Now, the, here's the only thing I'll ask. If you have a disagreement, you have a chance to make your point as long as you're not being disingenuous. And you got to get to your point. <laughs> I'm serious, right? It's like uh Huh. Let's go back to the part of the video while we're waiting for, for people to get in. It's Friday, so we're gonna have a little bit longer show on Friday day. I went to Spain. Right, I so, I ran back So basically you, so it's two thousand like two young today. <laughs> You're yeah. two thousand twenty one huh? right now. And you did go to? Did you work? Were you, you said you were with your family when you were playing. No, I went with this um, basketball group. I was literally there for two weeks to run basketball camps. It was not oh, a okay. trip. You so you yeah. didn't pay for it. No, I didn't pay. I I did pay for it actually. Yeah, of course. How much? Is, how much did it cost you? But, like, so I was eighteen when I went. So the intention was never to go there to date or meet anybody. How much so did it cost you? You went? It cost like two grand. You ain't been on camera. Yeah, if you're not on camera, you're not getting in. Yeah, I don't think they can see that. I don't think they know that they're in a green room. <laughs> uh, poor babies. Yeah, you're not gonna get on. You're not gonna get on the camera showing showing your butt. Just stayed there for two weeks, but again, I was. Pay I mean, my mom. Paid for it. So no, see, what I'm trying to show is how unrealistic what you just said. I don't think it's. I don't think it's over because of how big the world is, and you ain't never been. There, you need to sit down way. somewhere. Right, but if I wanted stop to, stop moving could, around, or I'm right. not gonna put you I on. I was too young back then. If I wanted to so, now, of I, course I, I, I could. Know, could you? Yeah, I could. What do you do for a living? Do, 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 do. All right, here we go. We're going to bring in Jamila. Hello. Hi, how you doing, Kevin? I'm good. What's your what's your disagreement? All um, righty. I have a disagreement. I was, I guess, kind of commenting on the title of the show about our modern women mediocre. Okay. Are they? Um, so yes, I think. Yes, I think. Um, now you're supposed to have a disagreement. You're supposed to be standing are, still. So I'm gonna say this: you're supposed to have a disagreement. You're supposed to be standing, being steady. So. Okay, I said. Um, yes, I think today's women are mediocre, but I also think that um, it's not to our own fault that we are mediocre. Okay. And I know you don't like excuses and things, but I have to say that it is the way we was raised. I mean, we didn't know anything besides the condition and the program that was put into us by our parents or our family and our household. So me and myself, you? I was raised by my mother. So it's still women's fault. But how could you say that? No, no, man? no, 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 no. I let you. I, no, see. See, I let you make your point and I let you get it all the way out. And when I say it's still women's fault, you don't even acknowledge. You you go to the deflection. This is why I cut them I'm, off. I'm not trying. It's still women's. Who raised you? 
your wow. mother, then you have to blame the person that was there more than the person that was not there. Can I disagree with that though, Kevin? It's about disagreement. No, right? you, you can't disagree. No, you have to look at the person who was there, not the person who was not there. Um, well, I mean, the reason why I say that is because I feel my mother poured all that she could into me. She and there was, the okay, part. there was a song by James Ingram. I did my best, but I guess my best wasn't good enough. Were okay, your mother and father, father, were your mother and father married? Yes, they were. Okay. And what, and where'd your father go? To jail. And was he a did he have a criminal tendencies before they got married? No, they was they met when they was young. My father, he, my father is not from this country. He came over here from Cuba. He was sixteen. What did he, he go to jail for? Mother. What did he go to jail for? What did he go to jail for? Yes, home invasion. Home invasion. Mm-hmm. So you're saying one day your mother met this guy and he's a perfect upstanding citizen. Then they get married. Then all of a sudden one day he's on the way to the grocery store. He just decides to become a home invader. What I'm going to say is my mother and my father met when they were young and they that's got not, married quick. They got married quickly. It's not what I asked. They got that's what I asked is he was norm he was a regular upstanding citizen. Then all of a sudden after marriage he became a home invader. I'm assuming, I mean, like I said, they, they marry quickly when they first marry. So I can't really. Does, does anybody in the, you don't know. So what I'm basically trying to get you to understand is either you don't know your the, the story because it doesn't make sense that he was an upstanding citizen. Then after marriage, he just became a home invader. I'm saying my, my father made choice. Yeah, I mean, he made bad choices, but my father. Also and your mother made a bad choice in picking him. But How was she when she got married? I think she was 23, maybe 23. And how was he? About 20, uh, he younger than her, so about 22. Okay. So your mother picked a younger man from who wasn't from here. And then, ultimately, ma'am, you're responsible for who you pick. Your I mother agree. Picked, so if your mother did the best she could, okay. It just wasn't good enough. And that's the problem. We have too many women picking poorly, having children with the worst of us, and then complaining about the outcomes. Don't get married early. Slow down. Let the men of your family and your community and the people who love you vet the kind of men you date and stop picking with your with your JJ and your tingly spots. Pick the boring, stable guy that's going to be a provider, not the guy who's going to do home invasions. And then you will have actually two parents in the household and have a better a chance for your kid to have a healthy life. So you don't but end up turning out the way you did. Excuse me. Right. But that goes to my point in that. That means then this generation, me, I'm suffering from poor decisions. And even though she did the best that she could. Yep. Now that's I'm true. Family, that's true. The best that that's I true. And that's why it's called a, a nope. And that's true. And that's why it's called a, it's called a, it's, it's a cycle. Right. And, and, and who's going to, and how does it stop? With, with self, with the person with, who says I'm ready to get off the merry-go-round. Uh-huh. And, for a and that means that person's going to have to understand and have to break the cycle because if not, it you'll just repeat right. the same destruct. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Unfortunately, ma'am, it's up to you to fix it. Because if no, you're over eight, if you're over, how old are you again? I'm 33. Okay, ma'am. Due respect. You 15 years past the mark to be talking about your mom and them. You're 30. No, you're a grown. You're a fully grown ass woman. Do you have any children? Yes. How I many? A set of twins, two. Uh, two sets of twins? One set of twins. I have two daughters. And where's your husband? In the room. And what does he do for a living? 
Um, he works for a American bottle company. He works in the warehouse. And how are you guys doing? We're doing well. I met him when I was um, 18. We've been together for a long time. Then break the cycle. Yeah. Because you're going to tell your daughters to do what? Go out and see. Accountability is what it's going to take from women. Nobody said you have to be perfect, yeah. but oh, I don't know why this is, your volume is so loud. But uh, the, your mom, uh, like I said, they may do the best they can, but it wasn't good enough. And yeah, sorry, and yeah. and just like my father's generation, they weren't. He didn't do good enough either. So I got to do better. See, men are okay right. with accepting that, but women are for but some. I, reason, that's, what, that's what I'm sorry to interrupt, but that was one of the disagreements that I was trying to get to was when you was one show I watched when you was talking about on the job training. But if we don't allow each other grace, my husband who grew up in a broken home. And me who grew up in a broken mm, home. I'm not going to change that one. We have to, you have to work together. I'm not going to change. I'm not going to change that one because two broken people getting together, allowing each other grace. I'm not going to change that one. Just because We're you not, and your husband, just because you and your husband, yeah. this work, just because it worked out for you and your husband, does not mean it's a formula for success. You need to. Uh, no, what? Hold on. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, if you're, oh no, 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 you can't over talk me. I'm not going to change the fact that you need help. Therapy. You don't can't be broken, and this other person's broken just because you guys it worked out for at this point. It's not a that's a that's a that is a formula for more dysfunction. So no, I'm not no, gonna sit I, back and say we got to give each other grace. All right, I got it on to the next call. Hello. Oh. Okay. I guess you thought you were gonna get that through. Yeah, in order to get on, you're going to have to uh, be seen fully faced on camera. I'm quicker than you are. Do, 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 do. I'm a leasing consultant. And in Philly, how much you making annually? Enough. To try if I want it, but I think. I don't know what that means. Why, see, y'all can't get on here and, and play bullshit with me. You can't put it out there and say I can do it if I if I if I wanted to. When I ask you about it, you'll get vague. Then it's gonna be bad. I just don't want to put my financial situation out there. Well, then I'm, I'm then I'm gonna call bullshit because then if you could, you would. Well, I don't. I don't put my financial situation out there because so many, far too many of our women are just walking through life playing. It's a game. Hee hee ha ha. And like I said, when I drop this video, I would drop it tonight if I thought enough of you guys are gonna go watch it. Because I think it's a really impactful interview. And you need to understand, a lot of you ladies need to understand that this is the part of the problem. You're taking life as a joke. Taking life as a joke, thinking you got time, thinking you can do whatever whenever you want to, and you, and you don't. The need to right. because right, I feel... Right, whatever your lease you consult in the departments, out? Yeah. All right, you ain't rich. You're middle class. Definitely not rich. You're middle class. That's the point. See? Yeah. This but is why also... things this is why things go bad because you there was no reason to come in here and make this situation anything other than a pleasant conversation. You start off What's with What's not pleasant about it? Uh well, when you start becoming evasive. When you say no. I no, no, I'll tell you what was unpleasant because this is I don't think I don't think sometimes a lot of you black women realize how shitty you're being. You mm -hmm. think being snarky and impolite is just normal. Right. So I'll tell you what was wrong. When I sat back, when I said, when I said is it over? He said, no, because of the opportunities of all the people around the world. And then I... Do, 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 do. Hello. Hi, Kevin. How are you? You want to back up off the camera a little bit. Yeah. Uh, what's your disagreement? So just the title. Um, Modern <laughs> really, really, uh, no, I don't think we are. And one thing that I hear you, you don't, talk about, you don't think no. you're, you, you don't think modern women are mediocre, no. And how old are you? We'll get to it, but I gotta ask the same questions I said, bro. How old are you? I'm 28. 28. Uh, are you married? No, any children? Yes. How many? Two boys. Same father? Yeah. All right. Um, how tall are you? <laughs> I'm 5'5". Five, five. Dress size? 18. 
How much did you weigh the last time you weighed yourself? Um, 280, but I had a baby four months ago. Okay. 280, 5'5", five, five, and a dress size 18. That is mm -hmm. physically impossible. Oh, well, I mean, you can't see my body, but I carry it well. No, there's no way to carry 300 pounds of 5'5", five, five well. I promise you that's Okay, not I'm not going to get into it, ma'am, because I'm just saying the dress size is impossible. Okay, I mean, you but can Let's go say on into it. Let's Look, I, trust me, you want to keep on moving right here. Uh -huh. This is where you want to keep on moving. You don't want to argue here. Go ahead. So what I was saying is that you, I, I hear you mention a lot about black women specifically. I'm Hispanic. Okay. Now you talk about generations and generations and things like that, but you also have to look and take into consideration culture, of course, and my culture. So I'm first generation Hispanic. My parents are from Your disagreement is modern women aren't mediocre. Exactly, because not all modern women are equal. We're not all the same. Okay, so would you consider yourself to be average, above average, mediocre, below average? No, right I'm, now? Yes. Right now, at where I'm at right now, I would say average. Because okay. I'm not working. So I, need, I need you to understand something. You're 28? Mm hmm 28 with two children, and one mm -hmm. of us is an infant, right? Mm hmm You're 5'5", five, five, almost 300 pounds. Mm hmm If that ain't below average, I don't know what is, and you call it average. Where in the world is a woman 5'5", five five and almost 300 pounds with two children and unmarried anything about average you're talking about physicality though no i'm like <laughs> yes because yes i am that's right because it matters to men yeah and i'm sure it does i can pull guys like nothing i mean that doesn't matter oh my like god stop it <laughs> you're almost 300 pounds how much you can pull that guys Anything I can fix that. You're going to pull a hamstring trying to walk. I don't understand why 300 pound women get on it. Look. Man. First of all, I'm not 300 pounds. I told you I was two, two, 280. 280. So 10%. The last time I. Ma'am, you weigh twice. Though. You weigh, you weigh, you weigh twice what a, you weigh twice. You can over talk me. That'll never work. You weigh twice what a woman should weigh. And the point is. You ladies like yourself come in and give yourself a higher estimation. I don't know any man that's a productive, competitive, successful man that would say you're an average woman. You're below average. Okay. If that's what you believe, but that's what not makes what you I'm... above average. What may okay, here what makes you above average? Or what makes you average? How about that? What makes me my mind, my personality. Uh -huh. did, okay. Those and did you together. did you graduate high school? I'm sorry. You graduated high school, yes? I have my GED. Okay, you have a G below average. You can't even get to high school. You can't even get a diploma. I have I'm in college. You got a GED. It's not a diploma. That doesn't matter. It's the same and thing. You're in college for what? Accounting. Okay. Oh. I'm really trying to help, but go ahead. Go ahead and tell us how well, your mom Excuse See, me? This is the problem that I have. This is the problem that I have is that the father of my children listens to you. And see, he, he's already. He should. Arrogant. He should run. He's already arrogant. No. He should I'm, run. I'm not with him. Hope. Him hope. Because he's probably running. You can't catch him. I don't need to catch him. And I don't. Good. Want run, him. brother. Run. Run. Pay the child run, support. Run. Run, bro. Run. 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 Run, bitch! Run! Run! You do not need a sassy 300-pound woman with a GED thinking she got the keys to life. Run! Really? But you don't even know me. You don't even uh, know I, I, What I do know about you is enough. Run! Run! 
Your man. Uh, what I do know is your man left. What I do know is he left. This is a woman who says, I, I, the problem I have with your title, a 300-pound baby mama calling up saying, no, modern women ain't mediocre. I'm average. Holy shit. That means that she is what most men should have. That's what average means, ladies. That's what average means. That means a man that gets out of here and becomes a solid citizen. Not rich, not poor, right at the top of the bell curve. An average guy, average tax paying American. That woman believes she is what they deserve. How many times, gentlemen, have I told you women tell men what they think they deserve by their looks and their attitude? What the hell do you think she thinks a man deserves? Run, man, run. Run, bitch, run! Holy crap. Wow. Wow. And that's the problem I have. My man listen to you. And that's the problem they have. Because men are starting to listen to me and I'm starting to look and say, why the hell am I working like a slave to be next to this, this woman with all this attitude who thinks she's because of her mind. The mind that couldn't graduate high school, but she's in the school for accounting. Great. Cool. But where's the humility? Where the, where the, even take it away from the physical. Where, where in her did you sense femininity, inspiration, humility, anything that's supposed to edify a man, inspire him to be better? No. Hell no. Again. Run, bitch! Run! Run! You can jog. She can't catch you. <laughs> She can't catch you. She can't catch you, man. If you just run, she can't catch you. She can't catch you. Just stop it. Quit it out. I have a glandular problem. That was that clip from South Park. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jamie, uh, in the green room, I can't see you on camera. So if I can't see you on camera, you're not going to get on. So if you're in the green room and I can't see you on camera, you're not going to get on. Uh, Linda, you're not going to get on. Let me go ahead and bounce you, Jamie. You know, uh, all these people in the green room. That everybody in the green room that you can't see, bounce them. <laughs> what do you say? Oh boy, say the super chat of the night. Y'all ready for it? I'm a PhD. I'm a GED. <laughs> I'm a GED. <laughs> oh my God, he said it. He said it. I didn't say it. You're going to hell, man. You're going to hell. He is going to hell. Sir, you are going to hell. You are going to hell, sir. Straight going to hell. Do not pass go. Do not collect $500. I'm a GED. One, two, three. GED. GED. <laughs> I'm a PhD. <laughs> oh, oh, it hurts. It hurts. Oh my God, it stings. It burns. <laughs> it burns. Oh, it burns. Oh. Everybody in the chat room, all the men. In one sound, in one voice, we're going to stand in solidarity with our brother who got away. She is mad because he listens and he's gone. We need to stay. Raise up two hands for him getting away. Both hands up. Thank you for a brother that got away. Run, Kunta. Run. 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 That's what they're mad. They're mad because men are starting to be like, I don't have to put up with this stuff. Run! 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 I can't stand him. Run! 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 
I'm a P. I'm a PhD. GED. All right, the, the green room is getting loaded up. Look at them. Everybody's thinking they're like, "Dang, bro, got up out of here." So a little bit more of the last clip. I'm gonna go about another ten minutes because uh, I am test that. Yeah. Have you ever been out of the country? Yes. On your well, own. I, didn't, I think you were no. assuming that I was. I um, exhausted all my options. Are you paying attention to here. how you got there? Well, I haven't exhausted all my options. Are, here you, yet. Pay, are you paying attention to how we got to your the snarky part yet? No, I don't Run. think I was being snarky. I think it would be different if, yeah, if I had exhausted all hey. my options here. Hey, 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 hey. That's not how this shit works. How does it work? You're about to find out real quick. You don't get to change the subject and do that. If I was talking about something, we're going to stay on that subject. Oh, you are free to strike up your own Instagram and talk about whatever you want to. That's that's rude. How old are you? I apologize. How old are you? I'm, 20, I'm 25. And in Philly. And I understand. And in Philly got some of the worst women in the world. Am I one of them? So pretty, so far, you, you're right on par. <laughs> I'm proud of it, too. No, I just, I'm, I apologize. You ain't got to apologize. You gonna, it's, it's you, it's, it's what you got to deal with, not me. And why I played that little part is because, and I'll, I, and I'll, all joking aside, it's far too many of our women feel like it's, it's okay. It like it's all right to be uh. It's all like it's all right to be snarky, sassy. I mean, it's like men in general, black men in particular. I need you to ask yourself a question: How often, when you're talking to modern women, do you feel like they think they're playing with you? It's almost like you know, man to man, we we approach each other with a level of respect. Because there's a low level threat of violence between us. But what I noticed today is a lot of women approach men almost like we're to like we're a toy for them to play with. Like it's a game. And ladies, it is not. That's why I was trying to get across to this woman. You you walk through life like it's a game. And the only one being played is you. That's, look at the men saying it, ladies. I don't. I didn't make this. Okay, whether you like my presentation or dislike my presentation, walking out into the world playing with men like shit is sweet. And the reason they this do how you go into conversations with people you don't even know, just making it, pissing and shitting all over the place, just because that's cool. It was unnecessary. All right, so let's talk about what you wanted to talk about then. Well, 25 year old, you, you got the floor. Go ahead, because I was going down the path, but apparently I don't know what I'm talking about. So you got it. Tell, tell no, us. No, it's, it's it's this is your platform. I'm just. Oh, a I've, guest. Already tried it. I've already tried it my way, but apparently you got something else. So you go ahead. Look at her. Just playing with that hair like it's hers. And let's go ahead. The reason that so many women like her do this is because they, they feel comfortable, they feel safe. Because if you Thanos snapped the world, and they actually had to put up with the smoke that they give out. They don't expect anything to happen to them. Like you can't, I'll do all, it's kind of like if you ever were, if you ever had to deal with your cousin, your female cousin or little sister, and she was overly protected. So all the boys can be rough and tumble, but if something happened to the little girl, everybody got a whooping. When she realized that she could get people in trouble for just crying, that was the worst thing for the family. So a lot of modern women today act like spoiled little sisters. But the problem is we ain't your goddamn biological brother. The men of your family put up with that stuff because there's a familiar bond. You walk out into the world thinking you can play with men. And one of these days you're going to roll up on the right one. Then you're going to wonder what happened. Look at all the men like, yep, yep. Shit ain't sweet. Ain't none of this shit funny. So they're upset because I said a modern women mediocre. They're flagging the video. Flagging out, we're not mediocre. Okay. Uh, and the problem is they don't, women like, don't think they're, they, they honestly think I'm just average. I'm on par with everything else. But if that's the case, you understand why men are, 
a lot of average men, average men are walking away from marriage and relationships because they're looking and saying, if the, and, and, unless I'm a six figure or higher earner, the best I can expect to get from a woman is a woman who is going to be independent minded woman is feminist with this kind of attitude and sass and think that I just got to accept her at whatever weight, whatever height, whatever, whatever, whatever. A lot of guys are like, I'm just out. When I'm here in Houston, I've been getting stopped by, by men, by black men every day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But I've had a lot of Hispanic men here. I had one dude driving down the street. He was so excited. He whipped his car into the, into the spot. He jumped out of his car, had no shoes on, just straight socks. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. This shit means something to men, ladies. And you would do well to start listening to what the men are saying rather than getting triggered by what this man is saying. I'm in California and my and the, and the guy who is the busser to the table, Hispanic guy, I, hey, I appreciate it. He walked over to my table. I watch you every night. Uh, it's not just black men. I talk a lot about black this and that because I can speak to the black community, but make no mistake. This is a Western thing. Men are tired of being told that they got to be superheroes and be rich. Or that just for you to act like you're the women you supposedly admire. That's what I'm talking about. Where's all this stress? Where's all this trauma? You got to understand this and that. Men ain't got to understand that damn thing other than Men aren't trying to hear this anymore, ladies. Either you get your stuff together and start meeting men in good faith or buy a dog and die alone because men aren't taking it. Especially the kind of men you want, the productive, competitive, successful men, the high-value men, you don't even exist to them. That one woman who got upset with me with the two kids, the big woman, high-value men don't even see you. So that's how this all started. Mediocre women wanting the best High value men, they don't see you. You don't exist. High value men structure their lives in a way to where they keep barriers between you and them. And the men you're supposed to be with, you think you're better than. Why else can you walk around with your attitude, talking the way you do, looking the way you do, sounding the way you do, and expecting somebody to put up with it? And I'm just trying to hold up a mirror and say, ladies, are you sick of having a bad outcome yet? Are you sick of it? Because what's got to happen is how many people watch Godzilla, King of the Monsters? After Godzilla uh, destroyed Ghidorah, what happened? All the other, all the other kaiju walked up to Godzilla. He's just standing there. And what did they do? Rodan was like, all the other ones just bow down. That's what Kiss the Ring is for. At some point, you ladies, if you want to partner with a man, you're going to have to learn how to bow down. You're going to have to learn how to kiss the ring or you don't have to. You don't have to kiss the ring, but you know what's going to happen? You will end up, uh, what, what's going to end up happening? Yeah, I know what's going to end up happening. They don't end up kissing the ring. They're going to do this. <laughs> now, your choice is that. Your choice is bow down or... Can't do it no more. I'm done. I'm fed up. Game over. Clock ran out. Girl, your time's up. Get your things. Have a nice life. Keep your head up. Like Shaq and Kobe was a good team. But now we broke up. Should have bowed to me. Bowed to me. Kneel for me. Kneel for me. Kiss the ring. Kiss the ring. Bow to me. Bow to me. Kneel for me. Kneel for me. Pay, Pay homage, homage to the king of your life. life. Wisdom and security. Which one you gonna have, ladies? Meow, 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 which one you gonna have, ladies? What you gonna do when I like catch an attitude? Drop to the knees and show gratitude. Kiss my ring, chick. Which one? One has a man, legacy, and a chance of a happy life, and the other comes with a scratching post. <laughs> uh, one comes with a scratching post. Which one you gonna do? Because you can't have both. Mediocre women, modern women, I don't know, by any arguable, reasonable standard, I think it'll be a I think a strong argument can be made that modern women today are mediocre at best. At best. 
And lastly, before I round this out, I want you to judge yourself as a modern woman, and I want you to judge yourself against the women of your grandmother and your great-grandmother's generation, not your mother's generation, your grandmother and your great-grandmother. And you ask yourself, when nobody's around, am I on par with my, with my, my, my nana, my grandmother? Am I on par with her? Do my woman skills line up? Because that's one of the things I did often in my life. I looked at my grandfather and I said, am I where he is? Fourth grade education. And he set a mark in my life that I said, okay, all this education and everything else, but he got more done with a fourth grade education than I've done with this. That was a man. And I was a failure as a man. I had more money, more education, more shit, less of a man. Less of a father, less of a husband. And many men do that with ourselves. Sit back and say, I am not where the men before me are. And we do something about it. We don't sit back and say, oh, well, because it is our responsibility, no matter how we start, to end better. So I'm not saying some shit just be messing with women to cap or whatever, whatever. I've done the, I've done my work and I still do my work. I ain't perfect. Never try to act like I'm perfect. But what I do is I do work. I work to get better. And I surround myself with people who work to get better. I work with people who are going to push me. I work with people who are going to call me on my shit. I work with people who are going to praise me when I do well and say you got some bullshit going on when you got some bullshit going on. And I make sure that I am my biggest critic. So what y'all say in the comment section, you got to understand, you ain't going to be harder on, on me than I am. So when I get the outcomes that, I, that come along with the work, you can't, you can't fade me about it. I work for what I get. And nothing is given to you. You work for it. And the man you say you want in your life, ladies, you must work for him. And the first thing you do is in order to get him, you must show your worth. If not, don't bother yourself by having a man that's worth anything. A man that's worth something would not take a woman who's worth less or this on potential. You must show your worth. Don't like it? That's cool. It ain't going to change nothing. But anyway, till next time. Peace. We're gone. I'm a GED.